Not so long ago, finding planets outside of our solar system was a pipe dream for astronomers. But now exoplanet discoveries are being made on a regular basis, with a few new planets being discovered each year thanks to increasingly powerful telescopes and detection technologies. But what happens when a planet is discovered and then abruptly vanishes? That's the situation scientists were in when Dagon, a large gas giant exoplanet first discovered by the Hubble telescope in 2004, mysteriously disappeared. There are instances where exoplanet prospects vanish after being discovered later by scientists. Later, observations at the same location can produce different results. It happens when you're looking for stuff in the far reaches of space and it's just part of the game. But it is just plain strange for an exoplanet to be repeatedly discovered, investigated in depth and then mysteriously disappear. There was definitely something there, but what was it exactly? When does a planet cease to be one? What's also happening to the galaxies in the universe? Let's find out. Over 4,000 new exoplanets have been found and verified to be orbiting other stars. But occasionally, things are not as they seem. Formalholt b, one of the few exoplanets to have been directly photographed to date and thought to be a large world, is no different. This is the planet that circled the brilliant star Formalholt in the southern constellation Pisces Austrinus. It is barely 25 light years distant and was among the first exoplanets to receive a proper name, in this case Dagon, because it is so adored. Formalholt is a very young star, perhaps only 400 million years old, compared to our Sun, which is 4.5 billion years old. So, while the presence of a debris ring still revolving around the star was anticipated, the discovery of one of the planets sculpting and shaping that disk came as a surprise. Dagon was discovered numerous times between 2004 and 2006. It was given a formal name in 2008 and had its planet status verified in 2012. Everything appeared to be rather simple until astronomers dug into further Hubble pictures from 2014. The astronomers were in for a larger surprise as they kept pointing Hubble towards Formal Holt and Formal Holt B to monitor the planet's evolution and conduct additional research. It seemed obvious that Formal Holt B was acting in a way that a legitimate planet should not. Formal Holt B doesn't resemble a planet in terms of both appearance and motion. It looks to be on an escape trajectory that will eventually take it away from its star rather than orbiting it like a planet would, which would have an elliptical orbit around its star. Alas, recent Hubble Space Telescope investigations revealed that Formal Holt B appears to have vanished. The findings imply that the beloved planet wasn't actually a planet after all, but rather a spreading dust cloud that resulted from the collision of two significant ice planets. Many people were disappointed by this Formal Holt B announcement. Although this outcome would eliminate one of the more intriguing exoplanets from history, it also makes a spectacular new discovery. According to the researchers, collisions like this in the Formal Holt system would take place about once every 200,000 years. So astronomers demonstrated incredible timing with these Hubble images. It is a major deal that we actually get to watch one because, according to astronomer Andres Gaspar of the University of Arizona, these collisions are incredibly uncommon. The dust cloud, which has dipped below the brightness threshold for Hubble to detect it, is now more than 300 million kilometers across, according to Gaspar and research co-author George Zika. The simulation of the cloud's course also reveals that it appears to be headed out of the formal hold system in the near future. According to Zika, all of our theories regarding how exoplanets and star systems develop are put to the ultimate test in the formal hold system. We do have evidence of such collisions in other systems, but none of this magnitude has been observed in our solar system. This is a blueprint of how planets destroy each other. According to the experts, the accident happened not too long ago, 
precisely before the initial photographs were captured. Since then, the dust cloud has grown and spread out, and Hubble can no longer see it. It has grown to a size roughly equal to that of the Earth's orbit around the Sun, which is much larger than any planet could possibly be, though very dispersed. The size of the dust particles is believed to be around one micrometer or one fiftieth that of a human hair. Even though Formal Holt B is no longer considered to be a planet by Hubble, researchers are nonetheless keen to continue their observations of it. The Formal Holt system will be investigated by the James Webb Space Telescope, the JWST, including through more direct imaging. It doesn't follow that there can't be other planets in the system that are still undiscovered just because Formal Holt B turned out to be a non-planet. After all, the circumstellar disk still envelops Formal Holt. According to observations from missions like Kepler and others, nearly all stars, including our Sun, have at least one planet. Many stars also have multiple planets. In fact, it is now thought that our galaxy contains more planets than stars. Massive stars, nonetheless, are not comparable to your automobile keys. They won't vanish in the washing machine or get buried under a stack of mail on your kitchen counter. However, a big star that scientists had been tracking for 10 years also seemed to have vanished entirely. Between 2001 and 2011, when many astronomical teams routinely observed the star to learn more about how stars end their lives, the star, which was in the very late stages of its life cycle, shone brightly. In contrast, the star's signal was completely absent in observations made in 2019. The mystery grew then. When scientists compared archival data from 2011 and 2016 in search of a hint as to why the star had vanished, their light was visible in the former but absent in the latter. The star mysteriously disappeared after 2011 without a trace. The star could have fallen into a black hole without the supernova that was previously believed to be a necessary component of such explosions, which is a very fascinating possibility, though it's a little challenging to pinpoint exactly what occurred. It all went down in a dwarf galaxy called PHL 293b, 75 million light years away. We lack the technology necessary to distinguish individual stars at that distance. However, there's a type of star called a luminous blue variable that has a recognizable light signature. These supergiant or hypergiant stars are huge and nearing the end of their existence. As a result, they are very bright and unstable, and as they experience outbursts and eruptions, their light can change greatly in brightness and spectrum. This pattern was evident in earlier scans of the dwarf galaxy and pointed to a star that was 2.5 to 3.5 million times as luminous as the Sun. So it came as a shock when scientists pointed out all four of the very large telescope optical telescopes of the European Southern Observatory at PHL 293b in August 2019. It would be quite unusual for a star of this size to vanish without igniting into a brilliant supernova. However, there is now growing proof that stars can actually fall into black holes without exploding into supernovae in recent years. A study on a giant red star that rapidly brightened before blinking out of existence in a galaxy 22 million light years away was released in 2017. It led researchers to hypothesize that the star had conducted a failed supernova before collapsing. Based on their findings, the team believes the star in PHL 293b was in an eruptive state between 2001 and 2011. From this point, there are two main possibilities. The star's first change is that it got a little bit fainter and veiled in a cloud of dust as it ejected material into the space around it, similar to the dust cloud that may or may not have covered the Milky Way's red giant star Betelgeuse two years ago. 
The star may have continued erupting in this scenario from behind its cloud of dust, but we can no longer see it because, well, a cloud of dust. A cloud of hot dust was ruled out between 2009 and 2019 by near-infrared observations. However, mid-infrared measurements that could confirm or rule out a cloud of cooler dust have not been made yet. Thus, the possibility is still very much open. The other possibility is that the eruption represented the star's final moments before it abruptly ended after 2011 when it fell back into a black hole. It would be a pair instability supernova in which the star is blown to smithereens rather than collapsing. If the star's original mass was between 85 and 120 times that of the Sun. Like a brilliant blue variable, a big star would be expected to create a supernova afterglow that shines in the sky for at least five years after the kaboom. Yet it's not inconceivable that the star underwent an undiscovered supernova. With the available information, it is impossible to determine for definite. Future measurements at various wavelengths will be necessary to solve the riddle of the missing star. However, more than just exoplanets and stars are vanishing. The fact that space is expanding faster than ever is one of humanity's biggest discoveries about the universe. A galaxy appears to move away from us more quickly the further it is from us, and this recession speed seems to increase through time. You would think that eventually these galaxies would move away from us faster than the speed of light, rendering them invisible to us and impossible for us to ever search. So how many Earth-observable galaxies have dropped out of sight? About 13.8 billion years ago, the Big Bang created the universe as we know it, and the first stars formed between a few tens and a few hundreds of millions of years later. That first light has travelled a great distance across intergalactic space and is only now reaching the eyes of mankind and our most advanced devices. However, not all galaxies are visible. Because of the mixture of radiation, neutrinos, ordinary matter, dark matter and dark energy that makes up our universe, it has expanded. That implies that light can travel up to 46 billion light years in the course of the universe. Naturally, that doesn't imply that an object 46 billion light years away from us today will ever emit anything that we can see. It implies that an object would be 46 billion light years away today if it had emitted light 13.8 billion years ago from a very close distance, and the lights would be arriving now, 13.8 billion years later. That is the furthest we can see in the observable universe. In total, this indicates that we may theoretically detect two trillion galaxies. There are now more of them than ever before, and as time passes, more will come to light. As long as they have stars, all of the galaxies we have ever been able to detect can continue to be observed, along with any new ones, theoretically. That is unchanged even by the acceleration of the universe's expansion. As long as a distant object emits photons, light from that object will continue to come as long as the universe keeps expanding. In that respect, zero galaxies have vanished from view. But the universe's expansion will result in the following two phenomena, especially given how quickly it is expanding. It implies that there will eventually be a limit to how far away we may ever view distant objects and that there is a limit to the distance at which a galaxy can be from us today and that this limit varies with time. The current sight limit is 46 billion light years which is the furthest point we can currently view. We can also estimate the sight limit for the future, and we discover that it is around 33% farther than the present visibility limit, 61 billion light-years distant. This indicates that, given enough time, 
we will eventually be able to witness a total of around 4.7 trillion galaxies based on how volumes function. When we gaze into the furthest reaches of the universe, we frequently observe extinct galaxies in addition to gazing backwards in time. That means that 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang, the light these galaxies are currently releasing will never reach us. As you can see, the expansion of the universe is speeding. As the fabric of space expands, a distant galaxy not only appears to move away from us today, but will also appear to move away from us more quickly over time. Currently, galaxies that are 15 to 16 billion light years away from us are already accelerating away from us faster than the speed of light. This implies that we would never get to those galaxies, even if we left today in a spacecraft that moved arbitrarily close to the speed limit. It implies that neither the light we produce now can ever reach them, nor can the light they produce today ever reach us. According to that theory, 98.6% of the galaxies we will ever view are already extinct, and presently we can only reasonably access around 66 billion galaxies. In other words, there will be 4.7 trillion galaxies available for us to view in the future. And despite travelling at the speed of light, 4.634 trillion of them are already inaccessible forever. This is an issue that will only worsen over time. Assuming that there are 400 billion stars in each of the 66 billion galaxies, we may estimate that there are currently 60,000 stars that are obliterating from our field of vision every second. Just in the time it took you to watch me say that 300,000 stars were created together with another 200,000 with this. Of all, there is still a lot of the universe to discover. Just by staring at their old ancient lights as it approaches, we can still see the farthest galaxies, even those we can no longer reach. But as time goes on, we can access a smaller and smaller portion of the universe. Over 98% of all galaxies we'll ever view are currently out of our reach, even with arbitrarily advanced technology. And as time passes, almost five complete galaxies go over that line, from being reachable to being unreachable each year. The universe itself provides us with the best incentive to invest in reaching for the far-off stars and galaxies, since the ones we can reach are forever disappearing. Every second that passes, another distant chance at making contact disappears, possibly forever. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.